In my last video, I talked about the wonderful creatures that inhabit the Lenya universe, and the methods their inventor, Bert Chan, used to create them. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can run them yourself and play around with them. No coding required. He explains it all in his two papers and shows how they are an extension of Conway's Game of Life and also a smooth knife. So, in the last video, I go into some detail on his methods, with a focus on the kernels that can be used, how they interact with the cells in the current frame, and also the growth mapping function. The former has a number of options available to choose from, all of which have the potential to give unique and interesting results, while the latter is quite sensitive to initial conditions, but is still fun to play around with. So if you want the deep dive into the technical details, please do check it out. So to get started, you need to head over to Bert's GitHub page and click download. When you extract the files, you'll see a number of directories. He's made the code available in a number of formats, but today let's just focus on the easy one, which is JavaScript. You could also take a look at the Python version, which comes with some extra bells and whistles. If you go into the JavaScript folder, get started, all you need to do is double-click the lenia.html file and it'll load in your browser. What will pop up is the standard interface with a running soliton already doing its thing on the left. It's the Orbium glider and it's the first one Bert found. The interface is organized into different sections. On the left there are four quadrants, each showing a step in the calculation used to move the glider from frame to frame. The top left is the current field state, Bottom right is the kernel currently being employed. Bottom left is the output of the kernel field convolution step. And top right is the output from the convolution step after it's been passed through the growth mapping function. There's a selection of the more popular shapes and gliders in the middle right. As you work your way through them, note how a different kernel has been used for the different shapes. Parameters related to the growth mapping function, namely mu and sigma, are also changing as you try different options. It's mainly a combination of different kernels and growth mapping setup that gives rise to the wide variety of creatures that emerge in Lenia. The Calculations tab has options for viewing kernel cross-sections and exploring different combinations of delta and kernel functions. It has information on the definitions of the space, time and mass units used, and how they translate into Lenia space-time. The Field Transition section presents numerous delta functions and the option to switch between them on the fly. The default is Gaussian, but you can flick between them quite easily. Under the Neighbor Sum section again, you get the cross-section of the kernel being used, which is handy when you're trying to visualize what's going on. And there are options for exploring combinations of both layers and core functions. And under the Statistics tab, you can see all the numbers. On each page as well, you can vary the kernel radius as well as the steps per unit time. And there's also a very nifty 3D plot available to play around with. Any of the solitons selected from the list can be displayed here. And you are not just restricted to the plot of the field data. You can also view the neighborhood sum, delta and kernel employed as well, all in 3D. There are also various options for rotating the image for a clearer view, as well as for grabbing an image. All the stable life forms in Lenya were given scientific names and were categorized in a manner similar to biological taxonomy and organic chemistry. And he gives some examples under the About section. It's also possible to scroll through the library of Lenya creatures and see them in action. Lots of fun, but if you really want to get into it, you'll need to jump into the Python version. It's able to utilize your GPU and has options for loading the third and fourth dimensional Lenya creatures. Not my GPU, of course, as that's nothing more than a glorified paperweight at the moment. The Python version also allows for larger window sizing and higher resolution simulations to run. So let's look at that next. If you jump back into the Lenia master folder, select the Python folder and then run the file shown. You'll of course need Python installed for this to work. Up front, you need a number of libraries. If you don't have them, then of course, just pip install them. It'll run in a 512 by 512 window by default. There's an advanced menu option I normally select to get started and a library of creatures to check out under the list menu item. There's also a polar mode available and under the parameters section you can adjust the growth function, states and time step. 
A few people have mentioned in the comments that they'd like to see what would happen if there wasn't a hard clip on field values, the numbers between 0 and 1. Well, you can now make it a soft clip, as there's an option for it under the options item. But to up the resolution and see the creatures that have been discovered in the third and fourth dimensions, you'll need to go to the command prompt. Running it as shown with the dash H argument reveals the options and how to use them. D2P2 means the two dimensions and pixel size of two. This is the default. Adding on the W option lets you change the window size. I tend to use this as the default 512 is too small for me. And when you run it, you get this. Dropping the pixel size to 5 gives some odd results, so don't do that. Dropping it down to P4 and gliders appear, but very pixelated. P0 is where you want to be, but of course it's going to run much slower. If you up the dimensions to 3 as shown, it will load the 3D linear library. There's also a 4D library as well, but my integrated GPU just said, we're dreaming. And really, to appreciate the detail in the higher dimension linear, I'd want to crank up the resolution and window size, which I just can't do at the moment. So I've spent a lot of time in the full-sized, high-resolution version of linear, and why not? There's lots to explore. The keyboard shortcuts worth noting are C and V cycle back and forwards through the creatures, X will add new ones to the world, and R and F will allow you to zoom in and out. Although it should be noted that you are not really zooming in and out, what you're doing is changing the kernel size. And this is why when you zoom way out, everything disappears and zoom in too much, the simulation will break down. Oh, time to save up my pennies for a new GPU. I hope that helped. As always, thanks for watching.